Uh, good morning. Yeah, today I am going to explain about the library automation and networking. You are all aware of that uh, in the previous classes we studied library automation. So why this library automation is used? So again, I will briefly revise that uh, topics in within five to ten minutes. So library automation is first uh, introduced by D. S. Herder in 1936. The automation came into the first existence uh, with the Greek word automos. Automos means the computerization of documents. There are various uh, automation modules are there. You are all aware of that. These automation modules are acquisition, circulation, serial control, OPAC, online public access cataloging and serial control. These are the different types of library automation modules. So we have discussed about these modules, what is acquisition, what is circulation, what is serial control, what is OPAC, what is serial management. So acquisition is nothing but acquiring the document, circulation is nothing but issuing the charging of the books, serial controls is used for the journals and OPAC online public access catalog. These are all we are discussed here. So in this very important aspect in automation, so what are the components is required for automation? So there are different types of components required. We discuss about the hardware and software components first. What type of hardware is required for automation of a particular library? So automation to do hardware is required, software is required, modem is required, internet connections are required and web server is required, operating system is required, such scanning softwares are required. So in hardware, in hardware, so we use it different types of servers. So what type of server is required, what type of processor is required, what type of uh, scanners are required and so we will see the uh, hardware it means computers, telecommunication signals and modem. Computers and electronic device it stores data according to the our instructions and modem will convert modulator and demodulator it will convert the analog signals into digital signals and digital signals into analog signals. So computer is very essential thing here is scanners are very very important to scan the physical documents into electronic format and modem is very important scanning process we will see. Then we will go for software. What type of software is required for library automation? So operating system is very very essential here. So DOS operating system, Unix operating system, Linux operating system is there. In the operating system is nothing but it is an interface. Operating system, it is an interface between user and hardware. User and hardware. Here we are using different types of operating system. That may be a Windows operating system, Unix operating system, Linux operating system. So selection of software is very, very essential in library automation. So operating systems we have seen. Uh, Windows operating system, Unix, uh, Linux uh, and other operating system. Here we can also consider here web browsers. To connect the internet we require web browsers. So different types of web browsers are required. Internet Explorer is there, Mozilla Firefox is there, Google Chrome is there. Without these Firefoxes, without these web browsers we cannot connect the internet. So in software we require automation software, operating system and web browser, then this automation software and web browser, this will connect to the outside world. So antivirus software is also important here to protect our data. Then, yeah, antivirus software, these are very very important to antivirus software to protect our data. So these are antivirus software are Norton, Quick Heal, Quickheal is one of the antivirus software. Casper Sky is one of the antivirus software. We need to install this antivirus software in computer. So hardware, software and modem, web browsers and antivirus softwares, different types of scanners, scanning softwares and scanners in OCR optical character recognition is there. Abifine reader is there. We need to convert these softwares text into digital format. Scanning software we have seen, web browsers we have seen, hardware we have seen, software we have seen and uh, antivirus softwares are seen. There is a very important um, concept here. We need to maintain these softwares 
which is ISO 2709. This is an international standard organization 2709 bibliographical structure. This is ISO 2709 is based on the bibliographic record structure. So there are different types of existing standards are available in for library automation. Mark 21 machine readable cataloging and ASCR2. ACR1 Anglo American cataloging rules are there in 1966. Then this Anglo American cataloging rules are revised and lot editions are came into existence in 1986. ACR1, ACR2, like that mark, common communication format, Dublin core elements, all are comes under ISO 2709. So these hardware and software components are very very essential for library automation. So next we will we will revise the networking concepts. Yeah, networking. Networking is nothing but connecting one end user to another end user. So one computer to another computer. How we are going to connect? Through internet. So here internet plays in a pivotal role. Internet has become the world's financier for transfer of information and exchange. When this internet explosion is came into existence in 1960s by Tim Berners-Lee worldwide web came into existence this internet revolution is taken place so in networking concept we are going to discuss here about what type of network we are used in the libraries local we are you are all aware of that these networks local area networking metropolitan area networking wide area networking so what is the difference this Three types of networking. Local area networking is nothing but within the campus area we can connect the computers from one computer to another computer. The radius is here within the two to five kilometers if you work. Local area network. This is also called as campus area network. Metropolitan area network. The name itself is metropolitan. Metropolitan is nothing but one city to another city these computers will be connected. So you can think it is as Hyderabad to Mumbai, Hyderabad to Delhi, Hyderabad to Calcutta. So these are called as within the country we can call it as metropolitan area network. So one city to another city these computers are connected. So once these computers are connected we can share the resources. We can send the information from one area to another metropolitan area. So there is a wide scope is there in wide area network. So this wide area network comes under the globally. Globally it means one country to another country we can connect from India to US, India to UK, India to France, India to Germany. So across the globe we can connect the computers, we can share the resources. So networking is very very important in automation. Without network we cannot share the resources. So in general these are the networking concepts. If you go for library automation and networking there are different types of networks are there. Again if you do Airnet is there, Education Resource Networking, NITNET is there, National Information Center Networking, JOHNET is there, Giant Academic Networking and OCLC is there. OCLC Ohio College Library Center or Online Computer Library Center the name is changed this information library network internet is there these are the different types of networks presently we are using in the libraries if you see which comes under which one for example if you see MAN MAN Metropolitan Area Network here Delnet is there Calibnet is there next Malibnet is there Bonet is there these are all comes under Metropolitan Area Network if you see WAN Wide Area Network, Vidyanet is a wide area network. This is the example for wide area network. Elnet, this is an example for wide area network. Inflivnet, this is an example for wide area network. Jonet. So these are the different types of network. These networking is useful to share the resources from one computer to another computer or you can call it as one user to another user. We are transferring the data within a single fraction of enter button. So once you click on the enter, the data will be transmitted from one computer to another computer. So the user, the first user will receive the second user within fraction of seconds, within the fraction of seconds. So this network is very, very useful in library automation. So next we will see the library automation softwares. What are the different types of automation software, digitization software, digital library software are available? You are all aware of this. Then you need to think about what is digital library, 
what is automation automated library automated library will work on only modules you can preserve the data in the electronic format so in digital format we cannot preserve in automated library so there are various differences between automation softwares and digital library softwares library automation software cvc CDS, ISIS is a computerized documentation service, integrated set of information systems. This is a CDS, ISIS is developed by UNESCO. This is the first software from the outside world. And uh, this uh, Libman, Lipsis, Libris, Sanjay, Tulip, uh, these are the all comes under automation software. The modules will be there. Then we can enter the data in Presently, physical data will be entered in traditional libraries, whereas the paradigm shift from the electronic libraries or digital libraries, the data is going to be entered in the electronic format. So these modules are helpful to retrieve the data immediately. A user will come to the library and ask the particular document. So how we are going to retrieve this document? We are going to retrieve this document by using this type of softwares. So, so uh, these are the soul is a library automation software. And this uh, CDS ISS is also library automation software and the digital library software. If you see the digital library software, DSpace, ePrints, Fedora, and uh, uh, Evergreen, this comes under digital library software. So we can transfer the data, text, audio, video, images in the digital library software. So here we need to remember that. What is very very important here? Open source and proprietary softwares or commercial software. What is an open source software? What is a commercial software? Open source software is nothing but the source code is freely available for the end user. This we can call it as open source. The source code is freely available. Whereas in the commercial software, we need to purchase the software from the vendor. So we need to think about the what are the terms and conditions are there whenever the software upgradation will take place automatically the software is going to upgrade it. In the commercial software as a user we need to think about the terms and conditions. As soon as these commercial softwares are upgrading we need to purchase uh, new software or already existing software. So here we will see what are the digital library softwares. DSpace, this is nothing but document space. Document space, this is developed by USA, University of uh, United States of America in 2002. Huh? And eFriends, this is developed by University of Southampton, United Kingdom in 2000. This is a Koha, this is an open source software, this is developed by Cutting Communication in New Zealand in the year 2000. Fedora, this is flexible, Fedora, F-E-D-O-R-A, flexible, extensible, digital object repository architecture. This software is also developed by the USA in the year 1997. Why we are discussing all these digital library software, automation software, this is useful for your competitive examination. In the competitive examination, they may ask, they may match, they may ask is like this, this space, this side they will give the library automation software and this side they will give, B, they will give the which uh, university or in which year it is developed. So this space is uh, uh, developed in the 2002, ePrints is developed in 2000, Koha is developed in 2000, Fedora is developed in 1997. But DSpace is developed by the USA and ePrints is developed by the University of Southampton. Fedora is developed by the Cornell University and uh, these are the softwares which are familiarly using in the digital libraries. We are already discussed about this uh, automation software, Sanjay, Lipsis, Libris, Tulips, Maitreyi, Grandalaya. Huh? Uh, this Maitreyi software is developed by the CMC Corporation Limited. Grandalaya software is developed by the NISCA, National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources. Libris software is developed by the Frontier. Tulip is developed by the Tata University System. Delsys is developed by the Libris Corporation. And Oasis is developed from Australia. Minsys is developed from Canada. So these are the different types of uh, automation software, digitization softwares are available to convert this physical document into electronic format or digital formats. So finally the conclusion, concluding here, why this library automation is so much useful. In traditional libraries, the data is stored in the physical documents. It is very, very difficult to retrieve the 
exact information whereas in the electronic and digital library softwares whenever the end user requests the information we can give that information in a finger tips so automation will save the library users time and also we can across the world across the world we can send the information 24 by 7 into 365 days it can also uh, minimize the library staff and you can save the time and money so library automation is very very essential in present day context in the 21st century so how we are going to retrieve this information uh, we will see now uh, how we are going we are